Hey guys, it's Will from LearnRater, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the 2014 AP Microeconomics FRQ question number two. In case you haven't checked out FRQ question number one, which is about monopolists, go ahead and check that video out now before going on to question number two. Question number two and three of the AP Micro exam is always going to be a little bit faster to solve than question number one, and that's just because it doesn't have as many parts and it's more conceptual and less actual calculations. So let's go ahead and jump into this question. This question essentially states that Ray Stable hires workers in a perfectly competitive factor market for unskilled labor. Using correctly labeled side-by-side -side graphs for the labor market in Ray Stable show each of the following the equilibrium wage and quantity for unskilled labor and the wage paid by Ray Stable and the quantity of unskilled labor hired. So let's first think about what a perfectly competitive factor market entails before jumping into the question. And this is something that you should always think about when you're going through that planning period for the free response section. So I know that a perfectly competitive market is where price is equal to marginal cost. But what's important about the intuition behind that statement? Well, one thing that's really important is that if price is equal to marginal cost, and that means that on the side of the labor markets, when you have a individual firm, that firm cannot set a price aside from P equals MC. Because the core idea of a perfectly competitive factor market is that there are so many firms out there that if a firm were to even attempt to price above marginal cost, they would lose the ability to sell to people and they wouldn't have any customers because those customers know that they can go to all the other stores that are actually pricing at a more competitive and lower price. And therefore, in the situation of a perfectly competitive market, the overall individual firm will be a price taker rather than a price setter, which would be the case in a monopoly. And so in this situation, that's something to keep in mind as we think about how we're going to draw Ray Stable's graph. So now that we've thought about that and walked ourselves through that, let's go ahead and answer the first part of the question. First, I'm going to draw the respective axes for the side-by-side -side graphs. So here we have price on the vertical and quantity on the horizontal. And I'm going to say the left side is the labor market and the right side is raise. So the left side is really simple. Uh, if you really think about it, a perfectly competitive market, we're just going to assume that demand is that downward sloping um, demand that we often are so used to same on race side and then on the supply side for the labor market it's just going to be an upward sloping demand however the st the supply for raise is going to be a little bit different and we have to think about this a little bit so if you think about the supply for ray how much raise is going to supply is going to be largely based on the market because again Ray is a price taker. He looks and assesses how the market acts before deciding his action because he understands that he himself and his individual firm does not have market power uh, and therefore he just follows the market. So let's first solve the labor market problem. In this case we need to solve for the equilibrium wage and quantity. In other words we need to solve for where supply equals demand. So let's go ahead and see where supply equals demand. That's right here. I'm going to draw that over. So that is W E, and then that is Q E. And now that we have that wage for the market, we know that Ray is going to pay that same amount for his own store because he doesn't have any market power. So therefore, if he were to set a wage higher than WE, then he would be paying too much. And if he were to set a wage lower than WE, then nobody would want to work for him because they know that they can go to the, somewhere else in the labor market and get a higher wage. And therefore, we're essentially led to a supply curve that is set for Ray right here. It's a horizontal supply curve. And this is what WR is going to be. And so, again, let's think about this. What this is saying is Ray is a price taker. And because he's a price taker, he's going to see how the labor market acts and then set exactly equal to the labor market because we're in a situation in which P equals MC, it's perfectly competitive. And therefore, QR is going to be right here. 
and we've essentially solved part one and part two. So let's go ahead and move on to part B. Is the marginal factor cost of the unskilled labor for Ray stable greater than, less than, or equal to WE? Well, we kind of just went over this. It's going to be equal to, in fact, if we were to mark this, the supply curve is also equal to the marginal factor cost. And the reason why is because, again, Ray is a price taker in the labor market. So the market will set the wage, and from there, Ray will react based on the market. He doesn't set it too high, because if he were to set it higher, then he's paying more than the rest of the market, and so he's taking a loss when he shouldn't be taking a loss. And if he's setting the wage too low, then nobody wants to work for him, because they know they can get a higher wage. So that's part B. Let's go ahead and solve part C. Part C is asking what happens when a government imposes an effective minimum wage for labor. So they first want us to show the effective minimum wage. So let's go ahead and change the color. Let's go with magenta. And let's go ahead and imp impose an effective minimum wage. Remember, the thing about an effective minimum wage is that it has to be a binding one. It has to have some kind of influence on the overall market. So you don't want to draw the wage down here because it won't affect how the market interacts right now since the minimum wage would be set below the equilibrium wage in quantity. So you want to set the minimum wage above. And so I'm going to just draw this line across. And this is the minimum wage. I'm going to mark that on both of the graphs just to be safe. Okay, so that is that part. And the next part is asking, on the labor market graph in part A, show the quantity of unskilled labor supplied in the labor market as a result of the minimum wage, labeled QS. So what we know is that they are essentially asking where W min equals the supply curve. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to, let's say, green this time. And I'm looking for where W min equals the supply curve. So in the labor market, that happens at this point. I'm going to go all the way down. And then I'm going to label that as QS. And that is essentially how much is supplied in the labor market. And let's think about this intuitively and why this makes sense. The idea is that the government has now imposed an effective minimum wage. And what that means is that the wage that unskilled labor is getting is now higher as a result. Because these people have an increased wage, there is going to be a overall substitution effect in which people will want to work more as a result of this wage increase. And therefore, the number of people that are willing to work goes up. So that makes sense. That checks out. So let's go ahead and put a check next to that because we solve that. And then finally it's asking as a result of the change. So um, before we do this actually, let's go ahead and just denote that this raise in the minimum wage actually changes this to the new supply, S2, which would also equal that W min. So, that's just to be safe, um, just to make it very clear to your AP grader that you understand the differences and the changes that happened. So now let's move on to part three. As a result of the new minimum wage, will the marginal revenue product of the last worker hired increase, decrease, or stay the same? Okay, so let's think about what marginal revenue product means. Well, that's essentially how your total revenue changes based on a change in your inputs, right? And so if you think about it, your demand curve is also synonymous with your marginal revenue product because it shows you how the interaction is in terms of a change in your inputs and your total revenue. So your, your demand is also equal to your marginal revenue product. And so if we compare these two points here, we have the original one here, and then we have the new one here. So what's happened? Well, we've gone up, right? So overall, your marginal revenue product is going to be a higher amount, and therefore, we will increase. So let's go ahead and change to a more uh, easily, easily uh, seen color, and go ahead and denote that marginal revenue product would increase as a result of the new minimum wage. And that's, again, because if you look at this point, 
and compare it to the old one, that has gone up. Therefore, it goes up. And that's it. So that's pretty much it for this question. It's not too difficult. Uh, it's mainly just testing you on that understanding that you get that in a perfectly competitive market, a firm is a price taker rather than a price setter. So as you can see from this exam so far, from question one and question two, you've been tested on a monopoly in question one, and now you've been tested on perfect competition. So in the next part, we'll go over question number three, which is related to um, the overall effect of certain taxes and the tax burdens. So that's it for now. But before you go, if you need extra practice, feel free to check out Learnerator for hundreds of AP microeconomics practice questions. Uh, we have it all easy, medium, and hard. Uh, you can actually try out all of, our, all of our easy and medium questions for free. So just click the video now and you'll be redirected there. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email at hello at learnerator.com. And I'll see you guys next time.